If you played old school Nintendo, then this has happened to you. Your game goes all crazy, so you blew on the cartridge. And bingo. Beating a game like Mario Brothers is all about knowing the patterns. Luckily, we're good at that. Our brains are nature's most powerful pattern recognition devices. They let us pick out meaning from chaos in order to sense danger so we can see consequences for our actions. For our ancestors, that could mean the difference between life and death. You eat the red berries and you get sick. You eat the blue ones and you're fine. You plant your crops in late summer, you might go hungry, but plant them in spring and you'll eat like a king. Since those early days, our brains have kept evolving, but maybe not as fast as the world in which we live. And while we keep upgrading our OS, we're operating with pretty much the same hardware that we had 10,000 years ago. And that can get us into trouble, because our brains are so good at picking out patterns, sometimes they see them when they're not there. We can see faces where there's only shadows, or movement in still images or even a cause for autism in vaccines. So I think they need to wake up and stop hurting our kids. So why are we so good at being wrong? It might be a flaw in our wiring. Our pattern-obsessed brains don't like uncertainty. We badly want to be right about how we see the world. So to do that, we look at it through various filters. If you start with the conclusion that the moon landing is a hoax or that man-made climate change isn't real, well, maybe you can find some evidence that says you're right, but you'll have to ignore a whole lot more evidence that says you're wrong. When we filter evidence to support that conclusion and ignore what disagrees, we're victims of confirmation bias. When we insist that random events have meaning, we've fallen victim to the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. I mean, it's easy to hit a bullseye if you paint it on afterwards. Or when we assume that thing A caused thing B because thing B happened after thing A, we're victims of the post hoc fallacy. Which brings us to this. I never asked myself why I was blowing on my video games. It just worked. Except I was wrong. And so were you. It didn't do a thing. It was just our brains playing tricks on us. The strangest part about the Nintendo thing is that everyone did it. Even in a pre-digital world, it spread like a thought virus. There was no how-to video on YouTube, it was just common knowledge. And you do it like this. I mean... In South Korea, many people still believe that sleeping in a closed room with an electric fan can kill you. They aren't dumb. We're just more likely to believe something if we see that other people believe it. That's the common belief fallacy. Which is why when I saw my friends blow on Nintendo games, then I blew on my Nintendo games. We thought we were clearing dust from the cartridge, increasing the conductivity of the metal connections, when all it really did was give us an excuse to take it out and try again. Third time's a charm. We saw a reason where there was only randomness. Oh, yes! I can edit it! And that's why science was invented. It's a way to fight that human tendency of assuming that what we see is what's true. Instead of starting with a conclusion and filtering out all the data that doesn't agree with it, science starts with an explanation and does everything possible to prove it wrong. Unfortunately, it's a pretty recent invention. Only a few hundred years ago, lots of very smart people thought lambs grew on bushes and that mice were spawned from dirty laundry. We're fighting some very old habits. The world is a complicated place and it doesn't always make sense. Patterns make it easier to find our way through the maze of randomness. But if we're not careful, they can get us lost. Science, above all else, requires a desire to disprove ourselves. It's that sharp tool that we use to poke holes in our ideas so that we're sure that they'll float. Unless we do that on a regular basis, our princess will forever be in another castle. Stay curious. A very special thanks to David McRaney, without whom I could not have done this episode. If you want to learn more about how your brain is out to trick you, check out David's books. You are not so smart, and you are now less dumb. Links down in the description.